spin up the auto cannons and prepare to engage ground targets. The Storm Cannon gunship is here to make its presence felt. Hello and welcome back to Auspex Tactics for another Space Marine unit review. We've been taking an in-depth look at the data sheets from the new codex over the last few weeks and how to get the most out of them on the tabletop. Today's review is the Storm Talon gunship, the Space Marine strike fighter that's just itching to put those assault cannons to work on ground-based heretics. The Storm Talon is usually deployed in a escort variety for the Storm Raven. It's piloted by one of the chapter's tech marines and is used to add extremely heavy firepower at short notice to an advancing Space Marine strike force. So let's take a look at this model's datasheet and see what it can do. The Storm Talon is a flyer choice for the new Space Marine Codex. Its primary armament is a twin assault cannon and its secondary weapons are heavy bolters that can be traded out for various other options. It has a movement of 20 to 50 inches, weapon skill 6 up, ballistic skill 3 up, though this will often be 2 up against ground targets, strength 6, toughness 6, 10 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 8 and a 3 up save. It degrades when it gets to 5 wounds when its ballistic skill drops to 4 and its max movement comes down somewhat as well. And then again when it gets to 2 wounds where its ballistic skill drops to 5 up. As its base loadout with the twin assault cannon and two heavy bolters, it will cost you 164 points. The twin assault cannon is heavy 12, 24 inches, strength 6, AP minus 1, damage 1. So this thing will want to be getting in close to use that primary armament. The assault cannons can pretty much deal with most targets, particularly when you're in devastator doctrine, and they'll be AP minus 2. You can replace the heavy bolters either with a Skyhammer missile, two LAS cannons, or a Typhoon missile launcher. The Skyhammer is the same points as the Heavy Bolters, and for that you get 3 Strength 7 shots at 60 inch range, it's a heavy weapon, Strength 7, AP-1, and damage D3. You add 1 to hit against flying targets, and you subtract 1 to hit against ground targets, so this could help you out a little bit against enemy flyers. The Typhoon Missile Launcher fires Heavy 2 either Frag or Crack missiles, the same as standard Space Marines with missile launchers get, and the last cannons have everyone's favourite 48 inch range, strength 9, AP-3, damage D6, heavy 1 profile. Upgrading to last cannons will cost you an additional 30 points over what the heavy bolters cost at base, so put your flyer up to 194 points, and taking the Typhoon missile launcher will cost you 18 points over the heavy bolters, making your flyer cost 182 points. The model has a fair few special rules, including Angels of Death, which will give it access to the Devastator Combat Doctrine, to get AP-1 on all of those shots, particularly the Assault Cannons and Heavy Bolters will love this. The Storm Talon is essentially a flyer that has a hover mode, so between its special rules it has the Airborne special rule, which will prevent anything but enemy units with fly to charge it. It has the Supersonic special rule, which is the standard flyer movement, basically you have to move over 20 inches if you don't want to crash, and it can only pivot up to 90 degrees before doing this. It has the supersonic special rule, which gives it minus one to hit with ranged weapons, such as most flyers get. And finally, it has the hover jet rule, which is the rule to basically put it into hover mode and stop it being a flyer, where it means it loses those previous three rules, so it can be charged by ground units, isn't hard to hit, and doesn't have to move as far. Its move characteristic becomes 20 inches, and you can opt to remain stationary for better accuracy. It also has the explode special rule, so on a 6 when it dies it will blow up, showering any enemy units within 6 inches of the model's base with d3 mortal wounds. And its final rule is the Storm Talon's unique special rule that sets it apart from its flyer counterparts, which is strafing run. This means that if you're resolving an attack with a ranged weapon from the Storm Talon that targets a non-fly keyword model, then you add 1 to the hit roll. So if you move with this thing and then shoot a ground target, you'll typically still be hitting on 3s. Or if you stay stationary and just decide to unload all of the guns all at once, you'll typically be hitting on twos, which is very nice. Now this rule makes the Storm Talon quite specialised. It is a it's a gunship that's pretty ideally suited to mowing down swaths of ground base infantry or taking some pot shots at tanks with its heavier weapon versions. So let's see how we can maximise this unit's performance on the tabletop. Let's talk chapter tactics first as per normal. And with vehicles and flyers in particular, as per normal, Iron Hands pretty much reigns supreme as it stands now. 6 plus feel no pain is a very handy durability increase on a fragile vehicle. Overwatching on 5s could be handier in a pinch with those assault cannons, particularly if it gets charged when it's in hover mode. 
and not degrading as fast is obviously amazing for any vehicle, allowing it to perform its job even when damaged. Furthermore, their boosted doctrine, which is move and ignore penalty for moving and shooting heavy weapons, is particularly great on flyers, which will often want to be swooping all over the battlefield, and means that this thing will typically be hitting ground units on twos re-rolling ones, even after it's moved. So that is just some insanely accurate firepower there. Because of its hover mode, the Storm Talon can also take advantage of Iron Father Fyros's 5-up invol save and the Iron Stone's minus 1 to damage, which is really useful on such a flimsy flyer. Moving on, Ultramarines can have a similar effect, allowing this guy to move and shoot without penalty in the Tactical Doctrine, and they have numerous good damage output buffing characters. Raven Guard will be handy with giving it a 2-up cover save if the enemy is firing from greater than 24 inches away, which you can usually manage with this thing as you can swoop in to engage an isolated unit in the enemy army on the flanks. Also, plus one to hit and wound characters is very nice, and Kayvan Shrike is a very cheap, fast chapter master buff that can get your Storm Talons re-rolling all its hits. Salamanders are definitely worth considering if you're using either the missiles or the last cannons, as that will usually translate those two into two wounds on enemy vehicles with D6 damage weapons. Crimson Fists could be handy for getting that two up to hit while moving if they're targeting large mobs of units such as orc boys and 30 man squads and imperial fists ignoring cover is great plus these guys have a strongly rumored devastator doctrine that will allow them to add one to damage characteristics when they're targeting vehicles which can turn those assault cannons and heavy bolters into genuine anti-vehicle weapons too which is a very solid buff indeed Unlike our previous review, the Storm Talon can make decent use of buffing characters as that hover mode can allow it to hover around in a captain or lieutenant's aura for those very nice re-rolls of one. And we've already mentioned just how nice the Iron Hands buffing castle of Fyros and the Iron Stone can be on these guys. As you can hover, you can also think about buying a Tech Marine to pile a few wounds back on a damaged Storm Talon. Much like the Stormhawk Interceptor, I strongly think about using the Big Guns Never Tire stratagem if you desperately need to have a little bit more damage output. If it happens to be hitting on fours because it needs to move and needs to target a fly vehicle, then this will give it a 33% damage increase, which could be handy on those assault cannons. Also, there is Armour of Contempt, which can shield it from some mortal wounds. So how would I run one on the battlefield? I'd personally be most tempted either by the Typhoon Missile Launcher, last cannons, or the Heavy Bolters to equip it with. I think that the Skyhammer missile launch is somewhat outshone by the Typhoon missile launcher, even against its ideal targets, so I'd want to pay the extra points to upgrade to the Typhoon launcher personally. Obviously the Heavy Bolter is the anti-infantry variant, possibly being some anti-tank as well if you're taking Imperial Fists, and I feel like the Las Cannons and the Typhoon launcher are fairly well balanced in terms of being both good anti-tank options, it's just whether or not you want to pay for that additional point of strength and additional point of AP that the last cannons give you. One small consideration is that the last cannons can fire independently and the Typhoon launcher cannot, but then the Typhoon launcher has its own advantages like firing frag mode for example, so I can see the positives and negatives of both options. In game, the main thing to bear in mind with this unit is that it packs fairly decent firepower, but is very fragile indeed. Toughness 6 with 10 wounds is really not a lot for 164 points at least of investment, if not more. So I strongly think about starting these guys at the back of your deployment zone behind as much cover as you can possibly get if you're going second. If you're going first, I typically try and operate at around about 24 inch range to keep them at arm's length. With that massive movement, you should be able to achieve this and you can consider whether or not to drop into hover mode to position your Storm Talons more ideally but you will lose a big amount of your durability by doing this, so it's a trade-off. I typically want to keep these guys in supersonic mode turn 1, unless I was fighting, say, a melee army that can't reach them. Similar to the Stormhawk Interceptor, Storm Talons can make good character assassins, so flying in and nuking an enemy character that doesn't have enough models next to him. You'll be putting your Storm Talon in the heart of the enemy army from this, but it might well still be a trade-off worth making if they can kill an important buffing character in the enemy's army. Storm Talons could also be used to block movement for large units such as knights or big blobs of plague bearers or boys in a pinch. Under the new flyer rules, models can move through flyers but they still can't finish their move within 1 inches of them. With their huge base, this basically creates an enormous no-go zone for enemy units 
particularly big squads of plague bearers or boys, might not be able to get all of their models to the other side of your base in their movement. So throwing a few of these up front in your army, turn one, could basically mean that the enemy has to deal with them before they can properly advance any foot slogging infantry. In terms of counters, the main one is to shoot these gunships with some decent firepower. They're really not very tough to take out. In particular, they have increased vulnerability to strength 7 weapons as these will wound them on 3s. Also be on the lookout for any charges he can make if the player owning the Storm Talon does choose to drop them into hover mode. The Storm Talon gunship is always going to get compared to its competitor, the Stormhawk Interceptor, which is made from the same kit and fills a fairly similar battlefield role, but with a bit more of an anti-flyer niche. Just looking at the raw stats on paper, it's clear that the Stormhawk Interceptor has a little bit of a higher damage output, as well as being toughness 7 and having the minus 1 to hit when fly units shoot at it, so it's pretty much a fair bit tougher, with also an additional weapon system, so we'll almost always have more firepower. The main trade-off it has is that it's more focused on air units than ground units, which are probably still a little bit less common than ground units overall and it doesn't have the very nice hover mode, which means that you can be a lot more flexible with your storm talons and not have to stick to prearranged flight patterns or have the risk of flying your flyer off the board. After the two, my personal competitive pick at the moment is the Stormhawk Interceptor, for a combination of the above factors, and doubly so in an Iron Hands army, where you still get hit on threes and reroll ones against ground targets even with the Interceptor. However, I do think that this depends on the rest of your army list, as if you need some more dedicated anti-infantry ground firepower, then the Storm Talon will do you better than the Stormhawk Interceptor will. I do quite like this, as there's some balance in between the two units, and I think that we will see both in competitive lists going forward, particularly Iron Hands. Thanks for listening to another Auspex Tactics review. As always, if I've missed anything or got any rules wrong, then please tell me down in the comments below. Feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more content similar to this. At some point in the next week, I'll be taking a look at the Storm Raven gunship, completing our look at the Space Marine Flyers. Thanks again for listening, and I'll see you guys in the next video.